Hey y'all, TRG here, and in this video I'll be going over a major hurricane that is expected in the main development region. I'll also go over an AOI behind that eventual major hurricane that could go towards the Lesser Antilles. And I will also go over an AOI in the Caribbean that's eventually going to go into the Gulf of Mexico and could bring some very marginal impacts to the United States. Let's go right on into today's video. So here's our National Hurricane Center seven-day outlook at the two o'clock advisory Eastern time. You can see Tropical Storm Kirk has recently formed out here. That is what's eventually going to become Major Hurricane Kirk and could even push Category 4 status. We have Tropical Depression, which is now actually uh, starting to weaken here. This was uh, Tropical Storm Joyce. It's now Tropical Depression Joyce, and that will continue to weaken and fall apart over the next several days. And we also have... Uh, post-tropical, I got it confused there, post-tropical cyclone Isaac, I'm kind of used to potential tropical cyclone, that's post-tropical uh, Isaac out there, way, way up there um, in the far northeast side of this map, that's one of the furthest northeastern tropical storms we've seen this season, I, it may actually be the furthest northeast tropical storm we've seen this season, and then we have an AOI out here in the Caribbean that is uh, aiming towards the Gulf of Mexico, and that could actually impact portions of the southern United States, uh, most most likely eventually I uh, could impact Florida with some impacts. We'll get, dive into that in a little bit here. Uh, but I also want to show you guys this AOI out here behind Kirk. Uh, that is also going to most likely become a named storm. And this, I believe, will be Leslie. I believe it's pronounced Leslie. Uh, and that's going to track its way towards the Lesser Antilles. However, it should, it should curve right back out into the open Atlantic waters. Currently, the National Hurricane Center gives that a 9 90% chance of formation within the next seven days, and it was recently deemed an invest as well. So this should quickly become a tropical storm within the next three to five days, and then eventually become a uh, hurricane as we go into the latter half of this week. Before I continue on with the rest of today's video, I ask that you guys go ahead and hit that like button and share this video with your family, friends, and on social media. And if you're new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button so you know when I go live or upload a video. Let's go right back on into today's video. Let's start off with our GFS model run. Here is a post-tropical cyclone Isaac that's on the left side of my face cam. We've got an eventual major hurricane right in here. This is what's left of Joyce, this low pressure. And then, of course, we'll have our next AOI south of Cape Verde as well. So quite an active uh, start to, well, eventual start to October. This is not going to look a whole lot different tomorrow. This is the last day of September. Tomorrow is going to be October, as most of you guys probably know. Uh, this is our AOI out here in the Western Caribbean, South Southwestern Caribbean. And just watch all these areas of interest. I'm going to pull this out just a bit. Let's focus on, how about we start with uh, what we're mostly going to be talking about. That's our major hurricane potential that is actually expected uh, west of Cape Verde. So let's just start with that we'll watch one of these interests um, at a time so we don't get too confused so the GFS model run takes this of course strengthens it into a major hurricane and uh, it, it's going to pull it right out to sea now I want to make this very clear because I'm seeing uh, I've actually seen a bit of um, misinformation that this could potentially head uh, towards the United States with this tropical storm uh, an eventual major hurricane that is a lie uh, there will be a high pressure in place and we're also going to have a low pressure in place out here and that's just going to act as a very sharp steering current that's literally going to sharply steer this out to sea uh, and you'll see that here as, as I progress this model run and it's out to sea near where Isaac is right now so that is not going to be a concern for any land but it will be a big time ace maker so it should start to even out our hurricane season and we'll probably stay at that average hurricane season mark instead of dividing down to a below average hurricane season so far uh, this is by the way on October 4th into October 5th when we are expecting this to form into a major hurricane. And you'll see that eventual tropical storm and most likely eventual hurricane there southwest of Cape Verde on this particular model run around that same time frame. Now that one, I will note, that could potentially head towards the far northeastern Lesser Antilles. I've seen some model runs, and we'll go over uh, one ensemble that shows that as well, uh, that this could potentially have a close call with uh, the northeastern Lesser Antilles, something more like that. Uh, there's also a couple instances and most of your uh, model runs are going to be showing this going out to sea. So we'll watch this a little bit closer because it could potentially head towards the U.S., but we'll just we'll keep an eye on it. 
And now let's go over to the Caribbean. So I want to keep your eyes focused over here, southwest of Jamaica. Uh, and just watch that low pressure progress up to the northwest. And the GFS model actually does take this eventually forming it into a tropical storm. Uh, but it takes a very long time in order to uh, become a tropical storm or borderline tropical storm. So um, we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, some of these GFS model runs do show it uh, becoming a tropical storm like this one here. So it's kind of been off and on on a tropical storm potential for Florida. Uh, we're just going to monitor it closely, but uh, we'll, we'll see. It, it has a chance to form, and uh, I want you guys just keeping an eye on that uh, Caribbean and Gulf AOI out here. Regardless of if it does form, it's just overall going to be a miserable um, soaking wet pretty much the whole week out here in Florida and portions of the southern, uh, far southern United States. So um, I really don't personally think that's going to form into much. I said that in yesterday's live stream, but we'll still keep an eye on it. So now we're going to really do the exact same thing we did with the GFS, but this time with your icon model. So, of course, here's the remnants of Isaac at the far, far uh, top right hand corner of the screen, just barely left of my face cam. This is what's eventually going to become a major hurricane. This is future Leslie. And then our AOI out here in the Caribbean, you really can't see it, honestly, on this too well, but it's really just a broad area of disturbance in the southwestern Caribbean into the far southeast. Gulf icon model doesn't really depict that too well, but let's go ahead and pull this on out. We'll kind of look at this all at the same time. There's your eventual major hurricane that develops relatively slow in your icon model. I think your icon model run isn't having the best strengthening phase with that. I disagree with that. I think that's going to quite rapidly become a major hurricane as we go into October uh, 3rd and October 4th. Um, and then, of course, your eventual uh, tropical storm Leslie, soon to most likely uh, be Hurricane Leslie as it moves off to the west. And then your Gulf AOI, you can see the ICOM model run just kind of sits it there in the central Gulf. And then it eventually ends up uh, getting very close to and probably impacting Florida as a low end tropical storm. So basically, um, pretty much what the GFS model run showed, except for uh, it actually has a tropical storm forming off the coastline of Florida. And another big change here between the GFS and the ICOM model run is the ICOM model run actually keeps future Leslie a little bit more to the south, which is what I was talking about. Uh, we're still going to keep an eye on that for a potential lesser and Tilly impacts. Now let's do the exact same thing, but this time with your CMC model run. Again, not really going to note Isaac up there, but we do have our eventual major hurricane uh, Kirk here and then eventual tropical storm to Hurricane Leslie. We'll just progress those on out right now. And again, the CMC, I just don't think, uh, I don't really think it has a good hold on how much Kirk's eventually going to strengthen. So uh, I think it's going to become a major hurricane probably on October 3rd or 4th. It uh, could be as late as October 5th. And then, like I said, Leslie behind that which is probably going to on every honestly every last one of our model runs that i've seen forms eventual leslie into a hurricane and um this one your cmc here uh, that actually takes it pretty dang close to the lesser antilles which is interesting so like i said just going to keep an eye on that back on over to the beginning of your loop to watch that aoi in the caribbean you'll see the cmc has that going just to the northeast of the yucatan peninsula stalls out in the central gulf of mexico and impacts florida as a very low end tropical storm uh, that's really honestly in my opinion the worst case scenario out of this is we actually get a tropical storm in florida um, that's really in like i said my opinion the worst case scenario with this i don't see a, a hurricane forming or anything like that in the gulf of mexico but a weak tropical storm trying to spin up and maybe impacting florida uh, i see that as a possibility but i don't see it being likely again we'll go over those ensembles to also show you more possibilities before we dive on into those ensembles, I want to show you guys your European model run. This is your newest European model run, so I haven't even looked at this myself. There's eventual major Hurricane Kirk and eventual tropical storm to Hurricane Leslie. And let's just pull this on out, see what our European model run does here. It forms Leslie into a hurricane. It forms Kirk into a major hurricane. So exactly what I personally believe will happen. And the European model run keeps eventual Leslie right on out to sea. Exactly what I personally believe will happen. Happen, but we'll still keep an eye on the Northeastern Lesser Antilles because you never know, things can change. Uh, we're, this is almost 240 frames out, so things could definitely change on this model run. Bringing it all the way back to watch our AOI in the Caribbean, see if there's anything that forms in there. I see a broad low pressure in the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. 
And it really just kind of stays there. And we just consistently see a lot of rain in the Gulf of Mexico on your European model run until a, a big, a big low pressure system eventually sweeps that on out to sea. So not much with your Caribbean AOI there on your European model run. Now let's go look at your GFS ensembles. Here's your GFS ensembles, and you can see pretty much every last one of these has a major hurricane forming in the main development region. That's why the NHC is expecting it. There's really not much room for uncertainty there. You know, we know for a fact it's going to go out to sea, and it is nearly guaranteed that we get a major hurricane and maybe even see a run for Category 4 status out of, uh, out of Kirk there. Our next AOI, it's all these big jumbles of low pressures out here on your GFS. FS ensembles. Uh, this is only 240 frames out, by the way. I don't like to go out much further than that. And you can see a lot of them really just take a tropical storm and spin it up and then probably pull it generally right where Kirk is eventually going to go as well. So only a handful of these, like literally two or three uh, ensembles are going to take this close to the Lesser Antilles as a tropical storm to hurricane. So uh, we'll still keep an eye on that second AOI. Like I said, it's eventually going to become tropical storm Leslie and may push Hurricane Leslie. And then out here in your Caribbean, you can see that's where our, uh, our low pressure is currently at in the far southwestern Caribbean. Most of your GFS ensembles will try to follow it, but the majority of these take it right on into Florida. Um, and some of these do have tropical storm force. I think you can see about two or three of these that have a tropical storm making landfall right around west central Florida. Uh, but the majority of these are really just um, kind of all over the place in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, but still, like I said, you do have a good chunk that goes into Florida, but only about three of those actually form it into a tropical storm. So I personally don't see a whole lot coming out of that Gulf uh, or actually Caribbean AOI. Um, and we'll just, we'll keep an eye on it, but I don't really think we'll see much out of that. Like I said, though, regardless of uh, if it forms, we're going to see flash flooding out of that and uh, some minor rainfall impacts. Here's your CPC outlook. They've already introduced a risk of heavy precipitation from October 8th to October 10th for the potential of, like I said, a tropical cyclone to move into Florida. Uh, I don't know how organized it's going to be. That's a very big question mark for sure, but we could see up to, keyword is here is up to a low-end tropical storm uh, impact portions of the far southeastern United States. So it's still worth watching if you're in Florida, uh, Georgia, uh, the Carolinas. Um, just keep an eye on it, but I really don't think we're going to get a lot out of that but like i said regardless of if we actually do manage to get a tropical storm out of it uh, we're going to have a risk for flash flooding out there and then taking a look at your tropical hazards here on your uh, uh your cpc this is an official source of course uh, they have a pretty good chance for a tropical uh, storm to form out there which will eventually become of course like i said leslie and then they also have uh, a smaller aoi in the far northwestern caribbean southwestern gulf of mexico uh, for any tropical activity that might spark up there uh, from the October 2nd to October 8th time frame. Beyond October 8th uh, for the 9th through the 15th, they still keep a smaller chance of tropical formation possible there in the main development region and a locally barely higher chance for formation in the far southwestern Gulf of Mexico. So not really a whole lot there on your week uh, three outlook. In terms of severe weather, this is all we have for the next eight days. Uh, we have a small marginal risk uh, for actually tornadoes and uh, the potential for some isolated damaging winds today on September 30th, 2024. Uh, but we could see some isolated spin-up tornadoes out there. Matter of fact, currently uh, Rocky Mount is under a tornado warning. Rocky Mount was hit by an EF3 tornado the other day. Uh, you guys are currently under a tornado warning um, as I'm recording this around 4.50 p.m. There's another tornado warning actually out there in Dunn, North Carolina. So uh, we could very quickly see a spin-up tornado out of some of these storms as they go just well to the east of Raleigh, North Carolina. So just, you know, keep an eye out there. Make sure you have your weather radio on and uh, you should be good to go. But that's going to be it for today's video, y'all. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you guys whenever my next video or live stream will be. Matter of fact, the next video will be a winter forecast on October 4th, 2024, around 6 p.m. Eastern. I'm going to schedule that about three days ahead of time so that way it can premiere. And uh, the next live stream should be tomorrow, which is going to be the 1st of October. Thank you guys so much for watching this video once again. I appreciate it and have a great rest of your day and or night. Stay safe, watch severe weather in the tropics. Goodbye.